who are familiar with the phonetic alphabet will have understood the reference at the start of this video. If you still can't understand the reference, then just think about the first letter of every single word. I'm not even going to explain it. It's not hard, okay? But West Ham United is back at the bowl hosting Sheffield United. And honestly, if I were a Sheffield United fan right now, I'd hate to play in another game at the minute. I'd hate to support my club because it offers me nil hope at the moment. But us being West Ham, we might end up giving them something. It's kind of written in the stars that, you know, Sheffield United gets battered 8-0 last week and then comes to West Ham and probably ends up winning. I hope I'm wrong and that can be reverse psychology in a way. But I'm just pointing it out there because we know what tends to happen in things like this. West Ham's lost its last two Premier League games, but it was against Liverpool and Manchester City. And anyway, in those games, we didn't actually do as awful a job as what one may seem. Sheffield United, on the other hand, is still yet to win a game in the league this season. And as the early indications suggest, it could be another season of struggle and one that could really blunt the blades. As far as the results go, it's a bit of a rock and a hard place situation. However, it's still not a hopeful one so far. Paul Heckingbottom, a Yorkshire-born coach who is now managing one of the two Sheffield clubs in United, is already facing a very big task right now. Despite his side losing 8-0 to Newcastle last week, the Sheffield United board is going to back the manager still, and he admits that he still has the full support from the owner. As far as the results go, it's not obviously been pretty. One point in the opening six games is not considered really acceptable most of the time. The one point came in a 2-2 draw against Everton, in which Jordan Pickford really kept Everton in that game. That was followed by a 2-1 defeat to Tottenham, in which both the Spurs' goals came in second half stoppage time. And then the 8-0 drumming in which eight separate players scored for Newcastle. Losing 2-1 to Manchester City was understandable. And the side also lost to Nottingham Forest and Crystal Palace. In four of those six games, United has scored a goal though. It's a team that has at least tried to get some kind of light in dark games. Albeit on being on the losing end of not winning it. The Sheffield United side this season also got knocked out by Lincoln City in the Carabao Cup. This was the same team that West Ham beat, was it two days ago? Yeah, it was two days ago. So, it's not looking good right now for Sheffield United, but there is still a lot of time left in the season for them to turn it around. It might just be a bad start for them, but they'll need to start picking up results because the early conversations and the early bookmakers have already got them favourites to go down. It seems like the three teams that came up from last season are already in for a real struggle. And Sheffield United's obviously in that same conversation. I have to talk about some of their summer signings. Gustavo Hamer from Coventry City was a fantastic piece of business. He's already scored two goals for them. He's someone I would have at West Ham. And not to potentially foreshadow anything, but if Sheffield United goes down, I'd nick this guy off of them. He's perfect replacement for Pablo Fornals, in my opinion, given that Fornals is likely to leave at the end of the season. Hamer was right there. Trustee is an Arsenal Academy product and an American defender who looks quite decent. Ollie McBurney has been a talking point at Sheffield United, obviously, because he's got quite a bit of a punch in him. And obviously... Man's just like COVID vaccine. Man's like Harold Shipman. He's got that kind of jab in him. There's videos of him punching people on the internet. Um, Cameron Archer's coming from Aston Villa. He scored in the game against Everton. They also have uh, some other players in the team that are um, coming through quite nicely. Um, players such as Ami Odzic. He's someone I wrote about on Sky Report two years ago, you know, and I said he'd be class. And he was fantastic for them in the championship. Easily one of the best defenders last season. West Fodringham was a goalkeeper. I remember when he was playing for Swindon Town on loan like 10 years ago. The guy can't even parry a football from what I saw. Um, Jaden Bogle starting to get a little bit more involved in games. 
They do have some good players in there, but are they all really Premier League level? That's a conversation that needs to be had within the fan base. I don't think some of these players may be up to scratch yet, or maybe they're being bedded in still. Even then, they've had about six weeks to do it. There are some players in there that I would take, though, for experience and class. But uh, And again, no one really stands out to me as, wow, this is super amazing. That's just my honest opinion. Do you know why the name Ravel Morrison is always mentioned at West Ham? Because everybody spunks over that goal he scored against Spurs. Yeah. Great. Get over it. We're 10 years ago. I was doing my, G well, was doing my GCs. No, I was doing my A-levels around the time when he scored it. What freaking ever. Because he had a really bright prospect. He signed for West Ham from Manchester United in 2012. Played 18 games for the Hammers and scored three goals. Went out on loan to Birmingham, QPR and Cardiff. And then signed for Lazio in a weird friggin' transfer. And spent around four years there. Only made four first team appearances. Went to play in Sweden. Went to play for Sheffield United for whom he made only one appearance. Then and played for Middlesbrough. A team in the Netherlands. Derby County. And now plays for Wayne Rooney's DC United. Who I'm weirdly enough seeing this weekend against the Vancouver Whitecaps. Yeah, Ravel Morrison. A player who we think about. Hmm. Could it have been a bit different? I'm going to say we win this 3-0. I know the Sheffield United team's going to want to bounce back and actually show some kick in it, given that it lost 8-0 last week. So, I expect us to be dominant and don't really allow them much. It's a, it's a team that really isn't scary enough. The team of 2019-2020 of Sheffield United finished in the top half of the Premier League table and showed a lot of fantastic results. It quickly deteriorated within such a quick space of time. And the early signs, as I keep saying, it's not good. So we've got to get this job done. And I want us to show a little bit more of a killer instinct in the first half. We didn't show that against Lincoln. We wanted to get a bit of a job done earlier on in the game. And then see it out as the time passes with a little bit more of a comfort zone.